It's the World Cup semi-finals. We have Caruana against Pregnananda and Carlson against Abbasov. So Nijat Abbasov from Azerbaijan has been having an excellent tournament, but he faces Magnus Carlsen, world number one. So here is their first game, first classical game. The format that Carlsen really isn't feeling too comfortable in at the moment. Let's see what happened. Well, it's another Rosalimo. And earlier in the tournament, we saw Abbasov play this uh, against Vidit, and he had to suffer in a long end game. He held it well. Um, but Carlsen goes for exactly the same idea. So e6 is one of the main lines. There's also g6. Um, my recommendation in my chessable course is knight f6. Also very reliable. But yeah, e6, Abbasov had played this early in the tournament. Obviously very comfortable with it. Played against Fiddler actually as well and, and won that game. Carlsen took on c6. This has always been my problem with playing this variation as black, that this pawn structure is compromised. And while you have the two bishops, it's, well, as we'll see, it can be a little bit uncomfortable for black. b3. So this is a similar idea to the Nimzo Indian, where you're, with colours reversed, of course, where you're playing against these double pawns. So this bishop might come to b2. It might also come to a3 to attack that slightly weak pawn. And this whole line was explored in the Anand Gelfand World Championship match in 2012. And Peter Heine Nielsen, Carlsen's second, uh, was Anand's second in that match. So uh, he understands a lot about this. Here's a very interesting moment. If black can achieve e5, then that should strengthen this pawn constellation. But Anand plays e5, as Vidit did a couple of days ago. So the idea is to undermine the support for the pawn on c5. So if that pawn advances, this is basically a reverse Nimzo Indian, where that is a weak pawn. Then white can get on and attack that with bishop a3, knight to a4, etc. Maybe even just fixing it here with c4. So Abbasov took. Now Vidit played knight takes e5, which was very interesting. But Carlsen played d3. Fascinating move. Didn't even bother to recapture this pawn. He's just satisfied that black has a weak pawn there on c5. And if black doesn't react well, then white will play moves like bishop a3, and as before, as I indicated before, knight a4, bishop a3, and that pawn will drop, and then white has a very pleasant structural advantage. It's not just the fact that this pawn is weak. You have to look at that bishop on c8 as well. That's not a great piece. You can see it's blocked in. It's funny, these double pawns... I mean the pawn on e6 can't move, so that bishop on c8 is really poor, quite a poor piece. f6. So Abbasov defends his extra pawn. Well, fine. Is that pawn majority on the king side? Is that going to come good at some point? Knight d2. Knight h6. Knight develops back here, or perhaps even here. Now. Here's a very interesting idea from Carlsen, Rook G1. And I mentioned Carlsen's trainer, Peter Heine Nielsen, previously. And apparently, Peter had been looking at this variation over the past couple of days. And so this was all part of preparation. Although, as Carlsen said, well, if you feed this into any modern engine, it's going to come up with this idea. But it's a very attractive idea. You want to advance G4, G5. Again, it's about undermining support for this pawn. This pawn has been undermined on c5, and now white wants to do it with pawn to g5, wheatling the pawn on e5. So even though white is a clear pawn down here, actually structurally, 
it looks really nice and black's pawns are a little bit compromised so the bishop comes out here i mean it's not on a beautiful square but it does mean that white can't easily put the knight there in some cases knight f7 queen e2 yep there's more pressure here so that if g5 comes this might be taken bishop b7 bishop b2 so you can see one two three pieces lining up on that e5 pawn <clears throat> And Abasov plays queen a5 here. I was wondering whether he should simply give back that pawn with c4. This was a, this is such a common theme in this uh, kind of position with this kind of structure. And then just go c5 because at least that bishop can drop back here to come to a good diagonal. But Abasov played queen a5, and now Carlson played c4. So, I mean, you could say this is a double-edged move because it weakens the pawn on d3, but it does mean that that pawn is absolutely fixed. It's going nowhere. I mean, in this position after queen a5, then certainly the pawn, c, pawn c4 is looking very likely as a pawn sacrifice <clears throat> with the support of the queen you know that bishop might come in as to b4 or a3 so c4 just fixes things I think this one is not running away now and g5 so abasov was clearly worried about white playing g5 g5 so just stop that one advancing h4 h6 and rook h1 so Carlson building a little bit of pressure here. Castle's queenside. Well, where else does that king go? In fact, you could say that neither king has a particularly safe spot to head for. I don't think white's king wants to be on the king's side. That looks very odd, having advanced these pawns. But Carlson decides to go queenside. Very interesting idea. I wouldn't say, you know, with these pawns advanced, it's not absolutely secure on c1. But it's certainly better than being in the middle and it's quite a cute idea if queen takes a2 in fact this rebounds on black completely king c2 and white is going to attack on the a file and this is actually a fantastic position for white um, with the bishop and pawn in its sights uh, in the rook sights so coming back here so queen takes a2 disaster queen c7 instead but look at that bishop Biting, whoops, biting on the pawn on c4. Absolutely dreadful piece. Knight e4. So white is starting to gang up on this pawn. You know, it could follow queen e3, you know, maybe bishop a3 as well. Um, and, and where is black's counterplay coming from? So Abasov decides to force the issue and he exchanges on h4 and plays rook g8 so he's looking to sort of keep the king side fluid and in that way distract white from targeting this weak pawn on c5 carlson as ever plays with great vigor f4 so you know he's trying to trying to break through um and well if let's see what happens if, if black waits then f5 is a good move so you're securing this square for the knight it means that knight on e4 is completely secure and white has excellent compensation for the pawn these these bishops are really poor pieces so after f4 this was taken but that allowed carlson to take on f6 Queen e6, check, and queen takes. So how's the material situation? It's now five pawns each, but black's pawns are just horrible. Just shot through. But this is still a really tricky position. That bishop bounces back into play. Why is it tricky? Well, basically because the king isn't completely secure. 
This knight could be on a better square. Let's just continue for a little bit. Rook here. Okay, that there's a threat to come down there. So rook d6, queen takes, and rook takes g4. So an exchange of pawns. I mean, coming back to this, this structure, as far as the structure goes, then white has dream position. I mean, it's, Carlson has everything he wants to achieve as far as, you know, wrecking black's pawn structure. You know, they're all weak, basically. But it is hard to control this position. For the reasons I mentioned earlier, the king is not very well placed on c1. It lacks pawn cover. You know, if I could play the pawn back to c2 here, then I would give white a very, very clear advantage. Because that would secure the pawn on d3. If I could centralize that knight, if I could magically play it to e4, that's just a dream position for the knight. But it's a little bit stranded on h4, actually. So this is still tricky. It's a tough one to control. Rook e6, let's zip through these moves. Knight comes to e5. Yeah, looks quite menacing. It's not going to last there. Looks too strong. This bishop needs to come into play, of course. That's that's still a problem. But actually, Abasov manages to achieve that. Let's have a look. Knight f5. So that knight spinning, trying to spin into play. But black is still extremely active. Bishop takes. Okay. Rook g2. Exchanges off those rooks. And queen takes knight. So an exchange of pieces. But the way that Abbas have done it, has done it, it means this pin is a bit annoying for Carlson. It's a bit awkward. If only, you know, somehow you white could coordinate and gang up on this pawn and secure the king. Well, that's that's another matter. But this is tricky. Rook h5. Okay, that holds the bishop. Queen f7. But there's still a pin here. And that's annoying. Um, best move, probably just king c3. Behind the bishop, it's reasonably secure, but this is not easy. Black has a lot of activity here, and you know maybe the, the queen is going to try and buzz down here. But Carlson confessed that he started to feel a bit nervous here, and in fact, he made... A terrible blunder. He played queen h2. And here, Abasov missed a winning move. He could have played queen f1. And incredibly, white is just so tied up here that it's impossible with best play to actually stop black's attack. So, for example, um, first of all, that pawn can't be taken because the bishop is loose. There we are. Um, it illustrates the fact that the king doesn't have good cover. Okay, what about playing queen d2? Okay, looks reasonably safe. Okay, then this rook swings round. It's going to come to the first rank. Look at this rook. It actually can't track back. Rook g1, and actually this is going to give black a winning attack. For the moment, you know, black's king is actually secure. What else is there? Okay, what about bishop b8? Looking to counter. Unfortunately, that runs into rook e2 check. Again, you can see the king's just exposed. So Abasov missed a big move here. He missed queen f1. Instead, rook g6. Well, this is also pretty dangerous because, you know, the rook swings over. And this bishop is looking to get into play. So bishop f4 played, rook f6, bishop e3, bishop f5. So this is still very, very tricky with the bishop activating. Bishop takes c5. Well, uh, Carlson has managed to win a pawn. Um, but queen g6, black is very active here. This is tricky. King c3. Now, bishop takes pawn, runs into bishop takes a7, and actually that's that's a bit of a killer blow with, with these pieces 
coming across. But Abasov played instead rook e6, trying to activate that rook. Good move. And in fact, bishop a7 is a really strong move again. Um, this is a winning move. Threat queen b8, of course. And if king takes, then you don't go for queen c7. That doesn't actually achieve anything. Well, prob probably a draw. Uh, but in fact, white has queen f2 check. And this is a simple double attack. And that is a very clear advantage. That must be winning for white. And so on. But Carlson missed it. He played rook h4. This is move 39, time control at move 40. He obviously just saw this and thought, okay, the rook's vulnerable, I need to just nudge it back. Bishop g4, trying to shut out that rook. And this is still very tricky. You know, something like queen g3, h5, secures the bishop. It's not so easy. But Carlson took on a7, and that's another mistake. This is move 40. Carlson got up from the board, um, but um, when he came back, he found that Abasov had played queen f6 check. Blunder. Black should play. Well, am I going to give give this one for you to work out? I'll show you what happened in the game. Queen f6 check. King b4. In fact, the king is secure. Rook e5. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I've, I've been ignoring this one for the time being. I mean, this must be winning for white. Uh, check and... Let's say rook takes bishop. That must be winning. Yeah. Okay, so here Abasov played rook e5. d4. In fact, the king is safe here. Queen e7 check. c5. And here Abasov resigned. Basically, the rook is attacked and the bishop is attacked. That's the end of the show. Um, if rook e4, <clears throat> the queen swoops in and that's mate. And otherwise, king takes a7, you take a rook, and that's good enough for white to win. Okay, let's come back here. Now, this is tricky, now, particularly if you don't have that much time. Okay, black to play. In fact, black can save himself. This is not easy. It's a really difficult one to spot. Queen g7 check is the move. Now, why is this a good move? Okay, let's try bishop d4. Well, now there's no threat for the queen to come down here. So that gives black more freedom. And in fact, after queen g5, incredibly white is just really hamstrung here and, and can't consolidate. You know, if the king was safe, then you'd win with your two extra pawns, but you just can't do it. So, I mean, obviously this could be some idea. Uh, rookie two also looks very dangerous. So, you know, these are the kind of moves that black has in mind. Rookie two first, actually, and then queen c1. So, okay, let's look at king b2. Completely impossible because of rookie two check, winning the queen. Simple double attack. Okay, what about king b4? Trying to escape Rook e2 is still very strong. Got to keep hold of that rook. So queen g3. And now you can give a check here. That's got to be taken. And queen d2. <clears throat> and this is winning for black. Having got rid of that pawn, um, this bishop can now come back here. Um, and that's checkmate. <clears throat> what else is there? Um, yeah, after the check. I mean, the... I mean, basically, white should hold this position. So after bishop d4, queen g5, you could play, for example, you can give up the exchange and play this one. And white has bishop and two against a rook. And with the exposed king, should be a draw. Still quite a tricky position, actually. Um, but that, uh, I think Carlson would have been incredibly disappointed um, if Abasov had actually found this one, because really, 
from the opening, he stood extremely well. Um, and maybe you could say at the end, well, Abasov, short of time, uh, you know, you just can't find this kind of defence. Uh, so maybe this was a normal result. But yeah, I think Carlson's probably probably a bit dissatisfied with his play, actually. Um, but fascinating opening. I really like Carlson's idea of e5, just sacking this pawn to undermine this one. And then playing with rook g1 and g4. Really interesting strategy. Okay, so game one to Carlson. Uh, Prague against Caruana, that game ended in a draw. So that's still wide open. Carlson just needs a draw in game two to go through to the final of the World Cup, a tournament that he has never won. Thanks for watching.